personally think we're so happy to see so many people here to enjoy this to symposium we put together and to um, understand the I'm Jana Adams really and many of you may have uh, read or seen our story with my daughter Brooke Adams uh, she takes cannabis to control her seizures at school the school district would not allow her to have it at school and so we fought that and won our case last September so she does attend school with her cannabis medicine. It's her rescue medication, just like an EpiPen, she needs it. So she's, hope, hope, hopefully we're setting a trend or a, an allowance for other children to access as well. Many other states have already passed bills and that's in the horizon as well. Um, Dr. Bonnie Goldstein is Brooke's doctor for cannabis and um, when we first found out that she was an amazing doctor that could explain everything to us in understandable terms, I searched her out and um, started to take Brooke to see her. And I knew that once, once we were able to get in a place where Brooke is a little more stable, that I wanted to have the opportunity to bring this information to other people so that they could have this opportunity to give to their kids instead of medications that had intubated Brooke, had put her in the hospital numerous times. And with cannabis, actually August 2016 is the last time she's been in the ER for status seizure because of cannabis. So without further ado, we're going to get started, and I'd like to introduce Heather from ASA, who's co-sponsoring with Whole Plant Access to make this event happen. Thank you. So I only have five minutes. I didn't do any slides, but uh, we have a table out there, and I'm happy to talk to anyone as needed. But uh, thank you, Jenna. My name is Heather Debray. I work at Americans for Safe Access. They are a nonprofit that was founded in 2002 to really help advance patient advocacy in the form of medical marijuana. And so we have worked to help promote legislation and bills that have helped advance uh, medical cannabis initiatives in almost every single state and a number of territories. And I am the director of the Patient Focus Certification Program at Americans for Safe Access, which is a third party auditing and compliance program that we offer to cannabis businesses as well as hemp CBD businesses to ensure that these operations are actually producing medicine that is safe. Um, there is some state regulatory oversight, but our program is really intended to go to the next level and help businesses really tell their patients we are committed to providing safe medicine for you. Americans for Safe Access has a number of different programs available to it as well. We have training and education programs um, for both the PFC program um, for cannabis businesses in cultivation, manufacturing, dispensing, and laboratory operations. And then we also have a cannabis care certification program. And this program actually provides education for patients and caregivers. And we also have CME credits that were just reaccredited um, with Dr. Korn through Harvard University. We have a flyer out front if you guys are interested, if you are medical professionals and you need to get CME credits, um, you can use our access code and get a discount on that training. And uh, the cannabis care certification also is available to dispensaries as a monthly subscription. And so this subscription, um, through the dispensary and paying for it, allows patients and caregivers to access the training and education materials for free. Um, that is a very long spiel. It is a lot of stuff to take in, and as we are on a time crunch, I'm going to hand it back over to Jana so that we can keep the program moving. But if you guys have any questions about Americans for Safe Access, the Patient Focused Certification Program, or the Cannabis Care Certification, feel free to come and talk to me. And we couldn't have done this without our sponsors. And so we want to um, give time to Sparks, who's our platinum sponsor. If they want to come up. 
Thank you, Jana. And um, I'm Ginger Dawn, and I'm here representing Spark today. Um, I also want to say thank you to Americans for Safe Access. It's an incredible organization, and, and if you haven't looked into it, please do. Um, they're really important. Um, first, though, before I'm, I'm Spark, I'm really a mom, and um, I have a 13-year-old who lives with epilepsy and is also a patient of Dr. Bonnie Goldstein and um, has been advised by Martin Lee, who um, both have been um, incredibly important to our journey. Uh, she's now 13, she was six when she was first diagnosed and when we first used cannabis. Um, you're gonna hear a lot of stories today, so I'm not gonna only share with you about my daughter Cypress, but just to say, without uh, medical cannabis and without the guidance of Dr. Bonnie Goldstein and without really good products that are dose specific, uh, that can actually, um, where we can see how much cannabinoids uh, we're giving to our children. Without that, um, we wouldn't, my daughter wouldn't be where she is today. So it's very important to me, as I can see for all of you, and it's so great to see you here, and thank you for being here. This is really important, especially in the time of the rec market, which is great and happening, but it is really important that we preserve the medical cannabis market here today. Um, and that's one of the things we're doing today. So, as I said, um, I also work for Spark, and um, I head up the community relations there in sales. And we sponsored this event. In case you don't know about Spark, we have five stores, three in San Francisco and two right here in Sonoma County. Uh, the two here is one in Sebastopol and one in Santa Rosa. We also do delivery service. We have a table out there, and you can check us out. Um, but just to let you know, I mean, we have been on the forefront of providing safe, uh, clean cannabis medicine to patients for over two decades now. So we've been working with American for Safe Access for a very long time. We've been around for a long time and we've been committed to providing cannabis medicine for the medical community. Um, uh, we are known for knowledgeable, approachable staff um, who are professional. If you haven't checked us out, please come see us. We have coupons outside. Um, we have all kinds of uh, products that I'm sure people, the doctors are going to be speaking about today. So a whole variety of things. Um, just let me make sure. Ah, so the last thing to share with you today is I wanted to give you a little visual of what a cannabis farm looks like. And one of the things that we do is consult with uh, Mike Benziger, who is a winemaker in Glen Ellen. Our farm is in Glen Ellen, where we um, grow our flowers uh, certified biodynamically or sort of organic to the 10th power. Uh, we also have information about biodynamic farming outside. So um, I'm just going to share this very short one minute video to kind of drop you into the plant, into the farm, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for your time. And again, I'm really happy to see you all here. So um, thanks for being here. I personally think that it's very, very important for us to farm the land with respect and to understand the responsibility, really the sacred responsibility we have to the earth and also the sacred responsibility we have to producing a cannabis plant that is completely pure and has the ability to elevate consciousness and has the ability to heal. What we try to do in the biodynamic practices here at Spark is we try to farm the plants in a way where they can absorb or eat as much sunlight as possible and then be able to hold that in the plant. The healing and the elevation of consciousness, the higher level thinking, is in the release of life. Thanks again. <laughs> Okay, the first presentation is going to be by Whole Plant Access for Autism, and we have Rhonda Moeller here to do that for us. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? Good. Um, it's been a long trip. We're from Southern California, so we uh, flew out here um, for this event. So I'm gonna go ahead and get Southern California. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and get started. So we're just going to talk about some tips for selecting some cannabis products. Um, we are um, going to be seeing and hearing a lot from some doctors later this afternoon. They're going to talk about the science and why this works for you guys. 
um, and we didn't want to you know, try and repeat some of that. I mean, it's better to hear it from doctors. So we're just going to kind of go over what we deal with on the patient side um, as far as how to go out and find something that kind of hopefully works for what you're looking to treat. Uh, so we are Whole Plant Access for Autism. Um, my name is Rhonda, as she mentioned. So a little bit about our organization. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. We actually started um, the nonprofit last year, so we're only about a year old at this point. Uh, we work with families and kind of help educate them about how to use cannabis, how to, um, how, the benefits for specifically autism and other comorbid conditions. We also work with individuals and organizations within the cannabis industry, um, also the medical field and researchers. Founded by two moms, myself and my partner Jenny, who's over there. Um, we both have children on the spectrum. We've both been using cannabis for years at this point, and we both have found success with using cannabis um, over pharmaceuticals. So we do have three programs within our um, nonprofit, data collection, education and outreach, and family assistance for those who are low income. And we're always looking for help, volunteers, donations, so uh, we always could use the help. Um, so this is just some of the um, data that we have collected. We have a large support group on social media. We have about 20,000 people that are in our group. And so there to learn, they are there to learn about cannabis and how to use it for themselves, for their children, for their family members. And so while they're there, we survey them and get information from them and try and understand what's working and what's not working. And that helps us internally know how to help families when they're first starting, you know, where to begin, um, hopefully what's going to help these certain conditions. It's not always 100%, but kind of gives us a, a pathway to, to help people who are just starting out. So, um, for example, we have over here some dosing that we've collected data on. This is specifically for autism. Um, different cannabinoids that we use, we see the benefits. Those are the white bars, that portrait the font's really small. Um, and then the, the negative effects, they're really minimal. F very few people are seeing negative effects with cannabis, but it does happen. Uh, we are seeing people getting off of pharmaceuticals, um, which is great. A lot of them that come to us, their children are on five, six, sometimes more pharmaceuticals that aren't working for them and they want to get off of the pharmaceuticals, so cannabis actually tends to help them. And then you know, we track things like what's working for them as far as chemo bars, which are strains, um, maybe even what brands are working for them, what um, hemp oil brands, what's working for them within their state. We do all these types of surveys because we need to know this to help more families. So we also, for education and outreach, we provide people with infographics to make things more visual for them. A lot of times people don't want to read a 15-page research article, and I get that. So we take that information, we try and put it into a visual for people to understand. So that's up here. Um, we also provide them information about the cannabinoids, um, what they do. We do webinars, um, and we also go to various events like this, and we present or we have booths to give out our information. We also have a website, and it's kind of hard to see, but we do have a members area that we have where we pay a small fee, it all goes towards a nonprofit, and these are all educational files that we have that you can access once you pay that small fee, and that helps, again, support the nonprofit. And we also have family assistance for those who are low income. Uh, we do. We just started that recently. We were fundraised for that, and we have money to pay or help pay families with for medical recommendations. If you're low income and you can't afford it, um, we have utility bill assistance if you need help there. If you want to be a member and you can't afford the small fee, we can help you out there. We also have um, companies that provide donations to us, and we just pass it along to the families. And we also get free discounted tickets to events, and we give those out to people as well. Okay, so as a patient support organization, um, <laughs> the most common question we get is, <laughs> where do I start? And this is probably just a few posts within the last few days that I pulled off of our support group. I mean, we get this all day long. Where do I start? I'm so confused, I'm overwhelmed, there's too much out there, there's so many products, 
I don't know where to go, I'm so overwhelmed, like how to help me. And so this is what we deal with pretty much all day long. And so it's kind of what we're going to go through as far as what we tell people to do, uh, the, the tips that are coming up. So we have eight things, and we have an um, infographic at a table, a card. You can always pick that up. It has all of this summarized on there. But we're going to go through each point today of what we tell people to kind of look for. Um, and we're going to go through each of these, so I'm not going to go through them right now. So for price, um, a lot of people don't understand price. And if you're going to do this long term, if you're going to use cannabis you know, for years, you have to be able to afford it. Um, so you have to understand how to look at a product and see if there's something you can afford, is it going to work for you. We see people that come to our support group and they post a picture of something they bought and it has 40 milligrams, let's say, of, of CBD in a one ounce bottle. And they ask us, how do I use this? And the first thing we say is, how much did you pay for that? And sometimes it's pretty ridiculous. Um, the amount of money that people spend for such a very low amount of, of a cannabinoid. So we kind of go through this whole price per milligram thing. It's the best way to compare different products. Um, let's see here. So here we have a, a brand that a lot of our families use. This is a, a, a one of the uh, oils that they have. It's called the original. Here's an extra strength and here's a full strength. And here's the prices, 150 75, we have 40. They're all the same one ounce volume. But when you look at the total cannabinoids that are in each one, we have 1,500, we have 500, we have 200. So when people are first starting out, they go to the dispensary, they may look at a, a bottle on the shelf and say, I'm gonna start with a $40 bottle of oil. That $40 bottle of oil, if you have a severe condition like autism, where you need about 100 milligrams of CBD a day, is going to last you two days. So that's not a very effective way of kind of trialing out a product because you're going to run through it within a day or two. This is a little bit better, but still, you're going to run through that pretty fast. This is even better. So when you look at the price per milligram, take the price divided by the milligrams, we're looking at this product actually is 10 cents per milligram. This one's 15, this one's 20. So the company is making a killing off of you right here. And you, even though you pay more up front, this is the better deal. It'll last you longer and it's a better price. So kind of understanding how to figure out that math is key, in my opinion, for doing this long term. Um, and then we do have a blog on our website that you can go to and read a little bit more about how to figure out price per milligram. And there's even a calculator on there. So you can enter in the cannabinoids that are in the bottle, how much volume is in there, and it'll, can give, it'll uh, I'm sorry, not the, oh, you can enter in the price, um, how much cannabinoids are in there, and it'll spit out price per milligram for you. So it's really kind of easy to do if you, if you don't know how to do the math on your own. So I, this is the best one, as I mentioned before. So concentration, so this is something that some families don't quite understand. Um, concentration means what is in that volume. What, and for our families, we need a higher concentration. Again, we need it to last longer. We need to work at a small volume because you don't want to be putting 20 mils of a liquid in your child's mouth and hoping that they don't spit it out at you. Because <laughs> I'm guaranteeing you they probably will. Um, so you want to be able to put in just a small volume into your child's mouth, and so you need a highly concentrated product. So this side over here is what we consider high concentration. If you consider this like a, can a cannabinoid, here would be a low concentration, same volume. This just has more in it. Kind of like the oil from the previous slide, it, it was same volume but just had more of it in there. So is the concentration on there? clearly listed, that's important to know. Um, if it's not, do they at least tell you the cannabinoid, it, how much is in there? Because if you can figure that uh, concentration out, it helps you in the long run. And it's important to know, because if you don't know, say for example, you run out of a product, it works great for your child or whoever you're trying to treat, 
you now need to go find a similar product. If you don't know the concentration of the two, how are you going to be able to, co to, to compare? I have families that come to us, they ran out of a certain thing, they ran to the dispensary, hopefully not the gas station, <laughs> purchased a product, and they come to us and say, this is not working like my other product did. I don't understand. I'm using two mils of this one. I'm using two mils of this new one. Why isn't it working? Well, then we got to look at the concentration. You got to figure out how much is in there. And then once you could compare milligrams to milligrams, now you can kind of see why it's not working. Because not every oil is going to be made the same way, unfortunately, or fortunately. So lab tested, this is important. Um, I'm a chemist myself, so I'm huge on labs. Um, some people don't understand labs in general, but I think it's just an important thing to look for in a company. Um, whether you guide them on the internet, whether you go to a dispensary, they should have labs. So we prefer to see third-party labs. There are companies that produce what are called certificates of analyses, COAs. That's where they take the lab information and they put it onto a different sheet of paper, but they put their logo on it. Some could say it's easier to read when it's on a COA because they cut out all the lab jargon. But what happens is when they take that information and move it over, there are some companies who don't have the best ethics, who may miss a decimal point, or a P becomes an F, or F becomes a P, fail becomes a pass, and then you're not sure really because they are in control of the COAs. So we always like to see uh, lab reports from the lab. And things to look for on a lab report, potency, which is the concentration, uh, metals, solvents, pesticides, bacteria, mold, plants, cannabis likes to grow mold. Uh, mycotoxins are a byproduct of mold and can actually cause some health, uh, uh, adverse health effects. Terpenes are great to know. And then some families that we work with are really caught up on is it organic or not, and that depends on the family if, they're, if they really want to have organic product. Um, USDA is now certifying hemp oils as organic, so you could find some hemp oils out there that are certified as organic. They're not certifying cannabis products, but they are certifying the CBD products out there. So there are some companies we work with that do have that certification. And here's an example of an actual lab report from the lab. You see the lab is listed up there. Um, this is a potency, and this actually is one of five. I didn't have all of the screenshots of it, but this is a, an example of a full lab report because it does go through everything that I mentioned before, pesticides, solvents. So it's a really thorough lab report to look at compared to, to this guy. <laughs> So additives, um, when you're trying to figure out what works for you, having something with a bunch of additives um, added in sometimes can make it a little bit convoluted. So what we like to tell people is when you're first starting out trying to figure out what works, stick with the basics. A carrier oil to dilute it in, the hemp extract. That's really all you need to start with. Figure out if it works. Once you figure out if it works, then if you want to try something that has some turmeric or some ginger, some other additives with some health benefits, be peppermint, you know, feel free because that all hopefully adds to it. But when you're looking at an individual who's sensitive and may react adversely to some of these additives, you really want to see if the cannabinoid is helping your child or your family member before you start putting in all these extra things. We do have some families that re react adversely, for example, to peppermint. Um, we have some families that react adversely to color additives. So it's just, you don't want to dismiss cannabis when it's really not the cannabis that's the problem. It's something that's been added to it. So location grown, I'm sticking my time. Okay, oh, I'm going pretty fast. Location grown, woo. Um, so it's always good to know where it's grown. Um, when you're going to a dispensary in a state like California, mm, I think you're pretty, it's pretty likely it's going to be grown within California, which is fine. That's a good thing. But when you're going online and buying some of these hemp products, um, they can be sourced from anywhere. So you kind of got to be careful from where, uh, to 
where you buy your products from, oftentimes they list on there where it's purchased, uh, or I'm sorry, where it's grown. Kentucky, Oregon, um, Colorado, those are great places for them to grow cannabis or hemp. Um, if it's not listed on the website, I often tell people um, either call them and figure it out or pick something else because you don't want to be putting something into your sick child or sick family member that's going to make them worse. Um, when you are grown, growing hemp in another country, regulations, who knows? Um, hemp in general is a bioaccumulator of things like metals. So if they're growing on a field that has heavy lead, you're gonna, now it's pulling the lead up, and that's being extracted into your medicine, which is why lab reports are important. Um, but just knowing that it's grown here within the States tends to be a little bit of a better situation, a little bit safer than having it grown somewhere else where the regulations aren't quite as, as strict. Extraction method, um, this is just good to know. We do have families that we work with that are sensitive to extraction methods. I know it's not the case for everybody, but we do have families that have reported back to us that one works better than the other, whether it's a CO2 um, extraction, whether it's uh, ethanol extraction, whether it's some other type of extraction. So we always tell people it's good to know how the product is extracted. If you're using something like um, an oil or um, even if it's edible. So that way you can track it and figure out, okay, am I seeing a pattern here where I can only use one or I, I'm only finding success with one over the other? Um, for example, I am one of those people that I can only use one of these extractions. Um, right here we have ethanol, here we have an isolate, here we have CO2. I personally can only use one of these. We actually don't recommend isolate at all. Um, so, not a fan of that, we don't recommend it, but that is a, there's a lot of isolate out there on the market. Um, but it's good to just track it and know it, and if, it, if, it's one, if you're one of the people that can only use one or the other, then it's, it helps you in the long run, because now you know if you, come, if you run out of a product, you know where to go to buy, or when you go buy another one, you kind of know what to look for. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Is there, um, just curious about the isolate, is there a reason for why you don't recommend it? Yes, um, so isolate, they, they extract the cannabinoid to where it's 99%, 99 99.9 or something like that, pure. And there's something that's lost when you do that. There's a bunch of other compounds in the plant, the terpenes, the flavonoids, uh, the, some of the essential fatty acids and the rest of the cannabinoids. So when you isolate just CBD, for example, you're missing the CBC, the CBG, the CBDA, the THCA, all these other cannabinoids that work in concert together to make it even better. So when you're using isolate, we see from research that they actually have to use a lot more. So to be effective, they're using hundreds of milligrams a day, 600, 1,000 milligrams a day. When we're using whole plant, our group average is 100 milligrams a day. So it just tends to be a little bit more effective down at the lower end of the concentration range for dosing. You're welcome. Customer service, we all have experience with companies that customer service sucks. You don't wanna do that when you're using a cannabis product. Hopefully you love whoever you're buying your cannabis from. Um, we have people that have run out of products and the company will do whatever they can to ship them a product. We have people in our group where we've seen that the, their child has dropped their oil, that's extremely expensive, all over the floor, and they're like crying to us, and the customer service rep in our support group, who's, we have some of them in our support group, they see that, they jump right on it, and they ship it next day. So when you have a child that's dealing with aggression, where they're banging their head on the floor, and the cannabis is helping them, you don't want to be out of, a, of your products. Um, when you have children with epilepsy who are seizing and now you're out of a product because maybe you didn't do the math right now, you, you just, or maybe it spilled, you don't want to wait three days or a week or two weeks for your product to be delivered. Um, so, or you don't want to go to the dispensary and the butt tender is rude. I mean, there's so many things that 
just don't add more stress to your life. We always look for companies that work with us, um, understand our needs, and customer service is just something that makes common sense to, to find a company that will work with us. So, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, anywhere in the United States, it's because in here in the United States, um, it's a little bit more regulated. When you're looking at a place like China, which does produce a lot of hemp, and they ship it to you, to us, you don't really want to use those types of oils. You don't know what they're growing it on. They could be growing on a field that's contaminated. Again, you have bioaccumulation of metals. You have um, maybe if they're shipping it over as an isolate, well, you don't know what kind of solvents they used. You know, it just becomes more convoluted. <laughs> so getting it here in the States tends to be a little bit safer. Um, we have a lot of families, um, you know, we, that's just something we tell them to kind of look for. So you. you're welcome. So MLMs, um, some MLMs have great oils, um, some of them don't, but we have seen on social media, and I don't, oh yeah, you can kind of see that. So the MLMs like to just say whatever. And um, the reps that are in our social, social media groups, they come in and they're looking to make a sale. They um, oftentimes just tell you what they want, what you want, whatever you want to hear. And they make these claims like CBD cures everything. Um, there's no contradictions with other medications, which is not true. Um, you won't fail a drug test when there's THC in that product and you will fail a drug test. So not that the oils tend to be horrible, it's just that their practices aren't the best. And so we just often tell people, just stay away from MLM companies in general. And this is more for hemp, obviously, than cannabis. Um, hemp MLMs seem to be springing up every single day. Uh, which drives us nuts. Um, as you see, this is a post someone made. This person has a support group, and they claim that their CBD has now um, cured their twins who have severe, severe autism. No longer, they no longer have autism. By the way, I ship worldwide. So, I mean, can I take that with a grain of salt? Um, this is hard to see, but this is a depression support group. Someone came in and said, hey, my depression's cured, cured all my family members, and I have this link, please click on it, and you will be cured too. This depression support group, you know, has thousands of people with depression, and I know it's hard to see, but down here, the people are just, you know, going at it, like, what the heck are you doing? This is a support group, not a place for you to sell your products. So this is kind of what we deal with on a daily basis with these MLM companies. Again, some of their products are okay. I'm not bashing their products. It's just their, their tactics are a little bit, a little bit rough. Um, so I just tell people to stay away. There's so many good products out there. Why mess with the MLM? Uh, their prices tend to be high. They don't often have full lab testing, and they just tell you whatever they think you want to hear. So it's just, just stay away in our opinion. And then really, what's the most important thing you need to look for beyond all those eight tips that we just went through? Is it working? Because even if you go through those checkpoint, check boxes and check everything off, if it's not working, then don't give up. Keep researching, find some different products. We had a poll in our support group, how many of of the families in the support group, how many of you found a product on the first try that worked for your condition? I think only 50% said one. The rest were between two and six products before they found something that worked for their condition. So you can go, and I do still advise to go through all these check marks, make sure the product is safe, make sure it's clean, make sure it's something that's gonna work for you long term, but also you have to, it has to work. It has to work. Um, there's a product that we um, love in our support group. It has a really great discount for families with disabilities. Um, it works for a lot of our families, but it doesn't work for my child. And so even though it's a great price point 
and I wish I could, I could buy that one and, and, buy, and I could afford that all day long, I have to actually buy something that's a little bit more expensive because that's what works for my child. So instead of paying two cents a milligram for CBD, I have to pay about five cents a milligram. But it's what's the best interest of my child and I will fork it out because it works the best. So I mean, still do your research, but at the end of the day, does it work? If it doesn't work, don't give up because there are, like I said, families that find two, three, after the fourth or fifth product, now they find something that works for them. So sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error, trying different things before you find something that fits your needs. So i will wrap this up, where to find us. We're all over the place. WPA for A, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. We have our website, WPA for A.org. Um, we have our support group on social media, 20,000 strong. Um, and you can go on there and get free advice all day long. So sometimes, because it's a support group and people can comment with whatever, the advice gets a little crazy. But um, if you look for the admins or the moderators, we generally have the best knowledge for you in those support groups. Um, we're on uh, the website, wpa4a.org, if you want to check us out. If you have any questions that you don't get answered today or you don't want to ask in public, um, our email is here, info at wpa4a.org. We also are going to be at the Cannabis World Congress and Business Expo. If anyone is going to be in the Los Angeles area in September, we have free passes for the expo. You're more than welcome to come and see us. We'll give you the code for that if you're going to be in LA area. And then thank you to everybody. Thank you for the speakers, um, for Jana, for the whole, all her team for setting this up. This is amazing. Um, thank you to our, our uh, moderators and our support group. They work really, really hard. Um, all our families that are home that are watching our kids, thank you to them. And then everyone who is here for attending, um, you guys are amazing. Thank you for coming out today. Um, it's really appreciated that you guys are just trying to learn about cannabis and trying to help your, either yourself or your child or a loved one. This is an amazing medicine I and mean, this is why we do what we do. Um, this is why we got in the plane and traveled here because we just, we've seen the benefits for our families and we want others to see them as well. So that's it.